Hey, welcome back. If you wonder where C went, it was on Facebook, 183C. I don't know if this process is going to work, but today I'm giving it a try. In other words, I'm broadcasting on YouTube, then Facebook, YouTube, Facebook, maybe even Instagram. I tried that once. Okay, so here's a ship. Let me uh, turn you around so you can see what's happening. First of all, this is the reference from which I'm working. One is a, uh, a photograph of a painting I did a few weeks ago, and one is a photograph. That I from which I did the painting a few weeks ago and uh, I did the painting at a festival in Norfolk Virginia and uh, someone has asked me to do one for them so that's what I'm doing pardon me just a moment while I plug in my electricity again and uh, I'm down to layer oh I don't know layer nine ten something like that that's sort of I decided to go ahead and bring you in so this is my second application of white, white opaque acrylics. And uh, what I want to say is, looking at my reference, what I, want to what I would love to convey is, um, can you hear me? I'm still working on the sound system, on the, uh, on the uh, sound equipment. Guys, I'm sorry I don't have it yet. Anyway, what I'd love to say is, how does one paint a highly uh, detailed, uh, variegated, um, busy subject. How do you paint busy stuff? And I feel like I've got a, a good answer to that question. I don't mean the only answer, but a good answer. And of course, I'm, whenever I talk about this kind of painting, I'm talking about this world of painting, this world of uh, not hyper-realism, which I, I have friends who do that, I admire their work, I respect them for their patience, their god-awful patience, um, and as you know, I sometimes enjoy doing hyper-realism. If you stick around much, you'll, you'll see me do some. I cover the whole gamut from total non-objective abstract all the way to hyper-realism, but this is my, my native tongue, if you will. This is my home, home base. Uh, somebody called it um, abstract realism, which I think is a great description for this style of painting. Okay, so back to my question. How do we, how does one paint a highly detailed, busy, highly variegated subject matter? And uh, my answer to that question is you paint it by layers. You paint it by degrees. You don't paint opaque one one layer, you paint a variation, you paint uh, um, you paint opaque, transparent, opaque, transparent, transparent, opaque, transparent, 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 opaque, and so on. You also paint large stuff and little stuff. You paint with big brushes. The brush I started out with this morning, where is it? Here's the brush I started out with this morning. Love that brush. Uh, you paint with big brushes, and then you paint with small. Big, large, small, large, small, large, small. Uh, you paint uh, dark things, and then you paint light things. Dark light, dark light, dark light. Some of you are recognizing already, aren't you? What I call the dance of painting, the dance. It's, an, it's a, a word picture, an allegory, uh, if you will, a metaphor for um, the process of painting is a Good paintings are the product of good process. Let me say that again. Good paintings, good paintings are the result of good process. Bad paintings are the result of bad process or no process or ignorant process. And uh, to describe the process of painting, I have a word picture. I call it a dance. And the dance is interplay between three couplets, three steps, one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> okay, three steps of two. The two, the three steps are large, small, light, dark, and literal, and artsy. Let me say that again. Two, three couplets, large and small, light and dark, literal, that means accurate to the object you're painting, literal and artsy. There are marks sometimes that you make that have nothing virtually nothing whatsoever to do with the subject matter. They're simply beautiful marks. Uh, 
And I have recently added a third step to the dance. And this one is a triplet. So three couplets and one triplet. And the triplet is opaque, transparent, translucent. And it's the middle one. And if you don't know what those three words mean, don't look at me and ask me because I'm, I'm, unless English is a second word, language for you, you, you should totally know what those three words mean. So don't, don't ask me. <laughs> I'm being kind of snarky here, aren't I? Okay, three, uh, uh, opaque, translucent, and transparent. So that's my best way to describe the process of painting. So when you're in a dance, you don't do the same step over and over. That's called hopping, right? You do one step, then another. But if you only do two steps, one, another, Texas two-step, then that's a boring dance. I'm not saying the Texas two-step is boring. I'm being silly there. But if you only have two steps in your dance, it's probably not, you know, probably not, it's a, that's toddler dance, right? Toddlers dance with two steps. There you go. Toddlers dance with two steps. Um, so if you want a good dance, you do two steps, then two other steps, then two other steps. And in my case, then one triplet. Let me say them again. I, I, this is the best I can do. I, I hope to God I have a better way to describe good painting, you know, in a week, in a month, in a year, in 10 years, whatever. But at the moment, this is the best I can do. Good painting is a product of good process. And the process is in, you go back and forth between light and dark, large and small, literal, that means accurate, and expressive. And then overlaid all of those, you also do interplay, a triplet between opaque, which I'm doing right now, well actually, yeah, it's actually more translucent than opaque, but I'm quibbling here. Uh, opaque, uh, transparent, and translucent. And that middle one is one that I believe over the last several years I have under-emphasized. So I'm all fired up about it because I feel like it's a, you know, a magic formula that I just rediscovered. The middle one. The, the um, translucent step. Okay, so yes, I'm all fired up about it because you know I'm a kid with a new toy. Translucent, woohoo! You'll see me you really use that later, uh, later on in the process. Uh, so right now, what am I doing? What is this, this current step is several things. It's literal, I'm being pretty careful. It's light, and it's little. So it's the three L's, small, little, big and little, little, light, and literal, this step. Now the one right before him, this, I was doing large, uh, you know, big brushes, large marks, large strokes, thick marks, and so forth, and dark. Now, after I finish this step, again, very rarely, can be done, but very rarely in dance do you do the same step in a same step. It can be done, but it's unusual, right? Usually it's one step and then another. Same thing with dancing, with, with painting. Very rarely would I do a second step, I mean, a, my next step, rarely would it also be light, or light and, uh, light, little, and literal. I'm, in fact, I'm positive it's not going to be that. Let me clean these brushes and show you what's coming up next. Hang on, not done cleaning these brushes yet. I did mine with my brushes. I have not gone all day. Okay. <laughs> um, looking for some, there we go, but this size. So I'm going large, you can tell. I was, uh, uh, last time, a few minutes ago, I was doing little, now I'm doing large. Uh, and, and a minute ago, I was doing light. Now I'm going to do Dark. You might say orange. That's not dark. Oh no, yeah. 
Well, let's get one thing straight. Transparent colors, no matter what color it is, if it's transparent, it's a dark. Are you with me? Watercolors, every time you put a transparent color on your paper, is the paper getting lighter or darker? Well, it's getting darker, of course. Same thing here, so I'm just acting, behaving, if you will, like a watercolorist. So I'm making the whole painting darker at the moment. Get it? And this is why, just what you're seeing right now, is why I'm so fired up about, and so excited about the dance process, the process of painting. Because just in those few minutes, a few seconds that I just did right there, where I did this transparent glaze on top of the white, this painting just took on a whole new life, didn't it? It took on a whole new, whoa, that was beautiful. And uh, indeed, that's the kind of thing I see happen all the time when I'm painting. The painting suddenly takes on a beauty that I don't feel like I put there, I just allowed it to happen by creating an environment where it can happen. I'm gonna do I'm I'm gonna do a little bit of blue. So I've done warm colors up to this point on this step. Now I'm gonna continue with dark. In other words, I'm the, I'm on the same dance. I'm on the same dance step, which is large and dark and not so literal. You with me? Not not so literal. Kind of literal, but I don't know, barely, barely. <laughs> Are you with me? I don't know. You could call this literal because here I am doing blue up at the sky, but I'm being very free. So it's almost like these marks that I'm making right now are more expressive than literal, almost. It's hard to say. I don't, I don't know which one, what to call this step as far as is it literal or not. But it's definitely large and dark. Now, one of the advantages of painting in this dance-like manner is you can paint ridiculously fast compared to punctilious stick out your tongue with a little brush and spend hours kind of thing. I probably got, I don't know, a literal painting time on this, uh, about an hour. Now, it's, I've been working on it more than an hour, but I've been taking lots of breaks, uh, uh, lunch break, kitty, grandchild break, all kinds of things. So one of the beauties of this this approach to painting is so fast compared to many techniques. Now it's not the fastest technique in the world, don't get me wrong. I paint sometimes with my good friend Mike Rooney. He does uh, Cape Cod School of Underpainting and his technique is much faster than mine. He really, if it was a race, he would win. But compared to many people, you know, it's a three by five foot painting and I've spent Maybe an hour and a half on it. Yeah, probably an hour and a half. And look, stand back, squint, it looks like a finished painting. More than that, it looks like a finished painting of a highly complex subject matter. So I hope that makes sense to you. The dance of painting. Let me say it one more time, okay? Here's the, there's three steps of two and one step of three. The three steps are big and little, large and small, literal and artsy or expressive, light and dark, Three, those three begin with an L, light, dark, big, large, small, <laughs> and literal, expressive. And then one triplet, which is an interplay, interplay between transparent, opaque, and translucent. That middle one being a real key one, which, we'll, which you'll see me use when we get into the oil. So I'm nearly finished with my uh, acrylic stage. And I got to tell you, I'm really pretty happy with this painting, as is already. I mean, honestly, I could hang it up and say it's done. If this was my style which it's not, I can hang it up and say it's done. That makes me happy. Thanks for watching. If you like this, hit subscribe and share it with your artsy friends. Thanks, bye.